This week's show is brought to you in part by SuplexApparel.com. Suplex is a clothing brand team of professional wrestlers consisting of Zack Sabre Jr., Matt Riddle, Jeff Cobb, Millie McKenzie, Angelico, Dave Mastiff, and Rey Mysterio. Not only do the wrestlers wear it on their gear to the ring, but you can also wear it. Their winter range is out now. T-shirts, hoodies, jackets, beanies, and much more. Pro wrestling-focused clothing for wrestlers and fans alike. Suplex Apparel ships worldwide. Make yourself a purchase. SuplexApparel.com. This week on the podcast, Honky Tonk Man and I are at a native reservation. I hit up some fun local Canadian shows, and finally, Paul London being Paul London on the Art of Wrestling. Enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. How you guys doing? Come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's personal journals and entryway to the minds and souls, the hearts and lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Cole Cabana. I'm a border crosser. I'm a border jumper. I'm a holiday celebrator. I'm a gift giver. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler. And I am sitting here live in my studio apartment. In Chicago, Illinois, before we go any further, this is fan support and listener supported podcast, supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday, ColdCabana.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you could support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend, tweet it out, Instagram, story it out. The best way that you could support, though, ColdMerch.com, DigitalCult.com. For the holidays, I will give you a free Sarah Shockey holiday card with any purchase. I have ornaments, I have t-shirts, I have Wrestling Dreams, Children's Book, Road Diaries, and so much more. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, I will send that out to you personally. That's what I do. I sit here in my apartment, if there's t-shirts that I need made, I politely ask the people over at Pro Wrestling Tees, do you mind stopping the crazy Black Friday sale that you're going through right now to make my couple t-shirts that I have to send out to the couple fans that I have listening, and that is you, and it's much appreciated. I gave a gift to my parents. I went over to my parents' house, and they uh, they looked like they had the shittiest pillows that I'd ever seen, so I got them some memory foam pillows. I wonder if it's going to change their lives. We don't know. The gifts that we get, we don't know. Some could be awful, resold, re-given away, and some are game changers. I didn't have a game-changing weekend this week, but I headed out to Canada. Got through the border, of course got pulled over for the hundredth time in a row. I had my note. I said I lied about crossing in Winnipeg in 2006. I'm a performing artist. Please let me through. Here are my credentials. After a couple of questions, they let me through. And then, as usual, here's my new thing I say now. Will you please consider taking off the flag? I am just wasting your time. And, of course, uh, that will not happen. I will be flagged once again when I head back to Canada. Per usual, I'm willing to do it. It's the sacrifices that I make because I love this business. I love this business, this business that I love. And the first show on these three Ontario shows was a show in Oswegan. And in Oswegan was the Six Nations Native Reservation. Not a first for me. But Shane is the promoter of SKM, and he invited me out to the show, and I thought this was going to be so cool to do some wrestling on the reservation. And here's Shane, the promoter, and I talking about what he got me into. So Six Nations is uh, a Native reserve. Yeah, it's Native American reserve. Can you say Native American? Yeah. (laughs) Because it's not America. Well, we're dual citizens. How does that work? I'm so confused. (laughs) And talking to your father-in-law on the way up, I was just like, Pardon all my ignorance. Like, I have so many questions, but I don't want to come off like an idiot. But I'm probably, everybody's probably uninformed, right? Yeah, so dual citizenship just means we're a citizen of both countries. We're North American since we're the original descendants. And what is, what is we're on a reservation. Like, yep. so like the whole crew is here, right? Exactly, yeah. So it's called Six Nations. There's six tribes that come down here. Mohawk, Seneca, all kinds. And what tribe are you in? Mohawk. So, but this is the first time you're doing wrestling on the reservation? Uh, us personally, yeah. It, the last time it was here was about six years ago. Um, it was just a small fair show. And then we had a few bigger events that were here about 10, 15 years ago. And then we've been doing about a year and a half in smaller towns. And this is where I'm from. And I wanted to do one here. 
you're hoping like all the people from the tribes come out, right? I'm hoping all the Indians show up tonight. <laughs> See, I could, I, you can't say that. Can you say that? <laughs> I can say that. Yeah. Yeah, I can't though, right? If you want to, I'll let you. No, pass. I don't want to. <laughs> I want to be. I I want to be respectful, but I don't know. You know, it's just, it's all kind of new. Not new to me. I'm just rambling like an idiot now. No so. problem. We appreciate that. <laughs> like we love when anyone asks questions about our culture. So no, ask away. I, did, did you did you hate Tatanka as a kid? No, Tatanka was my idol. It, to me, it felt like he lived on the road, but he's not even close to here. <laughs> when you found out Chief J. Strongbow was a New Yorker? I'm not, not going to lie, it kind of hurt. Like, yeah, of course. I thought like that, you know, that's one of us. And no, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and then there are people doing those kind of gimmicks, like stereotypically... What are have you guys had conversations just in, as your people like about that kind of stuff? Does that make sense? Yeah, like um, there's certain ways to portray the culture and to do it appropriately, and then there is just stereotyping and just coming out and looking super racist. <laughs> so if if one of if someone's like that on a show, you'd be like kind of gross. But if they were native, it'd be okay. I'm quite. I don't know. Yeah, so like uh, we have traditional regalia and whatnot, so it's not. Uh, not everyone gets to wear a headdress like that's you know only chiefs get to wear those so and you know, I, I don't have one we have what they call gestoas and those are used in ceremony and whatnot to have an actual headdress that's you know that's not something i can go buy at a store and then anyone doing the gimmick on the show tonight no no no, no. you didn't think that'd be a big baby face or that everyone would be everyone would see right through that there's not a lot of native american wrestlers around here so nobody really has anything going right now gotcha well i think that that would be your number one baby face. <laughs> or are you hoping that I will be so over with the natives? You will be, sir. They're, they've been waiting for the boom boom. Don't you worry. <laughs> I wasn't just over because they were excited to see the boom boom, as Shane said. But I was given an introduction that was the most perfect introduction. It was from the greatest intercontinental champion of all time. That's right. The honky tonk man was on the show. He was in the ring. He was singing about. Pretty Ricky challenged the Honky Tonk Man. I'm telling you all the storylines that went out through this show. And Honky said, I'm not ready to wrestle, but I know someone who is. And Honky said he was the greatest of all time, but he said now this man is the greatest of all time. And I'm sure he said that to every single wrestler that he's ever done this promo with. But I took it to heart. I really think he meant it. And I'll tell you, Honky Tonk Man has been on this podcast, and this is a little story of what happened uh, at this show. Honky Tonk Man walks in, says hi to everybody. I say, hey, Honky. He looks at me and goes, hey, how are you? And then uh, we start talking about Arizona. I start saying my parents, they winter out there, and we have this maybe five-minute conversation about Arizona, maybe six or seven minutes. And then he leaves, and then he comes back in the locker room right before my match, and he goes, Coke Man, are you kayfabing me? What the hell, Colt Cabana K Fabin me? And he's got this big smile on his face and he knows me. And I'm just like, we talked for seven minutes and I know exactly what happened. He went outside. Somebody told him what he was doing in his match that he was going to introduce Colt Cabana. And then he said to himself, Where the fuck is Colt Cabana? I, I know Colt Cabana. I haven't seen Colt Cabana. And then he realized as he came in the locker room, Oh, that that guy I had that seven minute conversation with. That was, that was Colt Cabana. And then he put the blame on me. He said, I kayfabed him. It was my fault. And that's one of those situations where you don't know. I've been in that situation so many times. And I know people younger than me in the wrestling industry have been, the same, have been in that situation with me. Where you're like, we've met, but I don't know if I'm going to tell him who I am because we've met too many times. So it's just, this is going to get weird. I'm just going to assume he knows who I am. And he didn't. But then... He knew the name, and then, of course, he knew me, but he just didn't put it together. He's 65 years old. I'm not going to blame Honky Tonk Man for anything. I'm not going to blame him for anything. I'm just going to talk to him about wrestling on the reservation. So you're, I'm doing a Canada Loop, and so are you. Is that right? Yes, I'm up here for a few days. And we're... Okay, right now we're on a reservation. Have you done any native reservations before? Yes, but this is a real nice one compared to the ones I used to do when I was with Stu Hart. Hey, you know, Stu and uh, Brett and uh, the greatest there ever was. Uh, the best there is. Uh, bullshit. Anyway. I liked it. I liked it. It was good. It was good. Uh, <laughs> no, no harm done, Brett. Come on, please. You know I'm joking. But we would go to the reservations in northern Saskatchewan or northern Alberta 
and it was like the worst places in the world. These poor people that lived in these shacks and shanties, and the the roads were mud, and and it was horrible. And we'd go there, and sometimes there'd be 30 Indian kids. We'd have matches that were selling out in Calgary, and there'd be 30 Indian kids on the reservation that came to the matches, and we'd turn around and drive nine hours back to Calgary. Were they sold shows? Is that why they were done? I don't know. It was just something Stu did, and we did them year for years and years. And I think there's a group out of Winnipeg that still goes up and does them. Did you have any native stars in Stampede? Mm, no, no, not really. No. We you think didn't. someone, I guess that's what they tried with Tatanka, right? No, yeah, he, he was there for a while, but I mean, he was like not a real native from Canada or anything. You know? I, I just mean in, in the wrestling Yeah, industry. yeah, I know what you mean. He's, he's fake Indian. No, he's not, no. <laughs> uh, no, Chris is really real. Okay. He's a real human being. <laughs> I get in trouble every time I do these shows. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're two for two right now. <laughs> uh, you're still you're still on the road, still doing this. Yeah, 41 years. I can't give it up. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's a fountain of youth, really. You know, you're around young people in the locker room. They're all young guys having fun. And here you are, an older guy, and you walk in there, and everyone's nice to you and treats you with respect. And, and uh, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good to be here with the fans because you know that you're probably never going to see some of them again. They're never going to see me again. And I saw a fellow out there tonight I was with in Calgary that I wrestled with in Calgary. It's been 32 years since I've seen him, and he showed up tonight to see me. And those are the things that, that's fun. And once you saw him, were you like, oh, I remember this guy? Well, yes, when he started telling me about the things that I, that we had done in the place, the, the Calgary, and then, I mean, I, I still look the same pretty much. You know, but these some of these guys, they, they change. They don't look like the same. I don't. You, you tell yourself you look the same. Oh, hey, y'all, I'd hate to say. Somebody said, how old are you? I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm not 25. 27. <laughs> yeah, hey, on a good day. <laughs> uh, and then I'd imagine, yeah, if you're, otherwise you're just at home doing nothing, right? Might as well come on out. Yeah, pretty much, because there's nothing to do. I live out west in Phoenix, and there's no real wrestling other than uh, the lucha stuff, and I don't do that. I mean, it's not my cup of tea. Uh, and so I have to come back east to work, and I really don't like the three- and four-hour plane rides anymore. It's just something that I like to do these one-man stand-up comedy shows. I like to do the comic cons. As far as getting in the ring, I'd love to do that. If I had, you know, guys like you that I could get in the ring with and, and actually work instead of having to worry about getting kicked in the head and, you know, getting somebody falling on me for no reason because they're not paying attention or, they, or they've been watching too many Monday Night Raw shows. I would still love to do it. Is yeah, that an invitation I mean, to work? Those things would be fun, but I just I can't trust these young kids anymore. I'll set it up. Yeah. I'll set up a match for you and I. Oh, well, okay, please don't. Uh, I'll get you a nice big payday. Oh, okay, I like it. Can I go over? Yes. I can't, I can't lose, you know. I mean, it's this thing. These old guys, these, these old retired guys don't want to lose. I don't care. You, you don't care? I don't care. Great, I'm winning then. As long as I get the gimmick money. Of course, once he stopped me for kayfabing him, he was happy to talk and happy to converse with me. He's, he's the best. So many people have so much shit to talk about Honky over the years. I've, I've heard bad things in the locker room, but every single time I've been in a locker room with him, he has been fantastic. And that was the show on the reservation. But I did want to say this wasn't my first time on a native reservation. I wrestled for the AWA Superstars back in 1999. I remember I'd just gone to college and I was offered a gig with Dale Gagner's AWA Superstars. That's confused with Dale Gagne. And he had a sold show. Up in northern Michigan, on a reservation at a casino, where I wrestled the Luminous Warrior. I remember Demolition Axe was on this show. I was 19 years old. This giant man named the Luminous Warrior closed on me so hard, I was pretty sure my jaw had to be rewired, but luckily it didn't have to be. But I do remember taking a toaster from the reservation's breakfast spot because I had just moved into my college dorm and I needed a toaster. I feel bad about it now. But this is what you do when you were young. So maybe it's my duty to donate a toaster now to a couple native reservations around the world. It would be it would be my duty. I would love to do that. If I made those donations, I could just ship them out from home with my sponsor, Stamps.com. And I wouldn't want to wait in the post office lines, you know. I mean, it would be a no-brainer. The holidays are the busiest times of the year. I don't want to wait in those lines. I'm just... I'm just going to do it from home. That's where I would send out those toasters 
or anything from coldmerch.com. I use stamps.com. It brings all the services of the U.S. Post Office right to my desktop. I, personally, I buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail using my own computer and printer. I can just print it out anytime, day or night. When I get home from a long weekend is my preference, just like this weekend. Then all I do is I take it downstairs. I leave it by my mailbox in this cute little outgoing mail thing that I made. And the post carrier takes it away. And then Colt Merch business is all taken care of. It not only saves me time, but it saves me money. I've been using stamps for well over five years now, and I've never overpaid once. It's been a lifesaver for me, shipping out books and figures and shirts. Let it be a lifesaver for you. Head on over to stamps.com and enjoy a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a free digital scale without any long-term commitments. Go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Colt at Stamps.com, and then enter Colt. The next day, I was 15 minutes away. Oh, these are the travels that I like. Bradford, Ontario, Canada, where I was just sitting around waiting for the show to start, and the hacker, Scotty O'Shea, a guy who I've been on many shows with over the years, was sitting around with me and he helped explain what was going on for the day. We're currently in Brantford, Ontario, Canada, in a venue with a a ceiling at about uh, 10 feet. Uh, We're in a low rider ring, so really the ceiling doesn't matter as much as you would think. Now, not everybody knows what a low rider ring is. They would think maybe... Hydraulics. Hydraulics. Yes, yes. Uh, Exhibit is here to pimp this one out. No, it's just a a ring that uh, is a foot and a half, two feet lower than usual. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun show. And, and this building, I'm looking on the wall, I believe it's a legion of some sort? Yes, yes, yes. What kind of legion do we know? I have no idea. In Canada, I don't know if you've noticed, there's a lot of shows in these legions. Do you speak French-Canadian? Absolutely not. Because <laughs> no. there's some Canadian, it says, uh, a memoriam forum rentin to... Rentimbus. Did we read that? You're you're reading it as good as I speak it, okay. I believe. And uh, decked around everything is there's Chris, there's Christmas ornaments and uh, uh, what would the word be for that? Uh, Decorations? Paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. This is a hot take, um, or a quick fact rather. There's no Jewish people in Canada, Stop so we it. all celebrate Christmas. I honestly, I, I have just looking at him. I feel the promoter is Jewish. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that could be true. <laughs> that, that, that's a good point. So, how many uh, on the docket for you this weekend? Uh, this is uh, one of two. I'm gonna see you tomorrow too, right? Uh, no, I'm not at Alpha One. Not booked. No, I'm at Smash in London. Cheap plug. It'll already be over by the time you hear it. Couldn't get booked, huh? Uh, no, you. I think you were there. I lost a loser leaves town yeah, match. Yeah, I assume you'd come back the next uh, week. No, I'm bringing Kayfabe back. <laughs> Luckily, bookings have kept me away. It's so busy around here. So, Have you wrestled for these guys before? Yes, many times. Many times. What's the scoop on this promotion? They run a really fun family, like, fun show. Like MCW, there's the plug there, Magnificent Championship Wrestling. They run every couple months, you know, so, like, storylines are hard to follow sometimes because it's not back-to-back, but really fun uh, shows. Crowd's always super involved. And uh, I hope they don't make me eat my words and you notice a big difference tonight. <laughs> yeah, I noticed uh, there's about 100 seats yep. racked up here, but it, it's a small enough building where all, all, all the seats have covered every inch of the building. So if, if this place is full, it'll look full. Typically, every time I leave this place, I go, that's the best crowd I've worked in in months. Wow, really? Yeah, for real. It's always really good. I'd rather take a smaller, loud crowd over a big, quiet one any day. Of course. Um, these guys are always great. So really hoping they don't make me look like an idiot today. All right. All right. Should be fun. Thanks. No, he was right. It was a good show. Crowd was into it. I was I was on last with Rip Impact, so just kind of watching the whole show, enjoying myself, watching some local fun wrestling. Cody Daner, he popped up in the middle of the show. Just in the middle of the show, he popped up. And always when in Canada, nice to get his perspective. When in Canada, talk to Mr. Canada. I'm Mr. Canada. This is your new name. I like that. I've, I've given it to you. I like it. Oh, let's go. I'm gonna run with that. You should. I'm gonna go to the dollar store and buy a giant Canadian flag, and then I'll come down to the ring with the Canadian flag because no one's ever done that. Well, ever. you missed. You came late to this show because you were doubling up, right? Oh, yes. You missed Mr. Mountie, who was on oh, first. Sorry. He's already done that. He's he had already the, done the dollar store flag. He had right? the Canadian flag, the Canadian pants, uh, <laughs> c- c- red sunglasses, oh. and came out to the Canadian national anthem. Merchandise opportunities. He, he was a big heel. Got yeah. got squashed in two minutes. Oh, a big heel. Uh, double duty today. Yes. So let's go over that. All right. Yeah. 
I uh, was just wrestling in St. Catharines. How far is that? It's only like an hour from here. Okay. Show started at four. Rare four o'clock start on a Saturday. Oh, so you must have been excited for that. Yeah, man. Main event, uh, heavyweight championship match, big main event, Mr. Canada in the main, and then scooted out of there as fast as I could. Did just you win? No. Damn I, it. I, I got screwed. And you know this. The only disappointing and frustrating thing was that I couldn't sell merch after the show because sure. I had to hustle here. Of course. Yes. And now it's eating at me that we're in the locker room right now. During like, intermission. intermission. Because I'm a mystery yeah. guy on the show and I can't be out there hawking my wares. Do you want to... Uh, I was going to say, maybe you can come in during my match oh. and do something, and then afterwards you go right to the tables. Oh. But we're, we're doing babyface, babyface, though. Well, then maybe it would be a good idea that if I just came out and set up my merch on the apron during your match. No, well, that's all right. That's okay. That's not taking anything away from your match. I wouldn't be upset about it. <laughs> did, you, did you merch beforehand? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. great. Yeah, I, I, did, you, I did well. You do better when after your matches. Of course. Right. That's yeah. just... That's wrestling psychology, merch 101. Yes. A lot of people don't understand that either. Like, it's, it sounds like an old school thing. Like, oh yeah, I want to. You want to be a babyface in the show because they'll send merch and guys like, oh, it's 2018. That doesn't matter. Yes, it matters. Yeah. It matters a lot. People don't understand that, but it, it totally does. Especially if you're right before intermission and then you go right to the table, they remember you because they just cheered for you. That is known in Ontario as the Diener spot. Uh, it's, it, in it's the right, babyface before intermission. People know that if I'm on the show, that's the Diener spot. Well, uh, Chris Hero christened that the Cabana spot years yeah? ago. Yeah. So. Okay. There you go. Oh, I I should tell you this. I was on a show up in Timmins. You, you have you wrestled in Timmins? It's it's up in the it's like northern Ontario. You've probably been up there. I think. Sounds familiar. Yeah. And uh, I was at the merch table, had my a banner, uh, everything out, and I think it was uh, Josh Alexander. Came over and looked at my table, and looked at me, and says, "You are the Canadian Colt Cabana." Yes. I, I, Look at us, it, we're yes, brothers. Yes. It, it, it warmed my heart to hear Aww, that. Oh, what I, 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 was a, I was an extreme compliment. Yeah, that was a total rip by Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh crap. Uh, and then I just walked in on something that I thought was fun. Okay. Was you don't have your music? Is that what it yeah, is? No. Like, Why not? What do people do anymore? Like usually you. Nowadays, it's easier than it used to be, right? Like, you can talk to somebody before the show and say, this is my music, and then they can download it beforehand. This being not the most organized organization in the world didn't ask me that or didn't cue it up with the music guy, so, well, he, that, doesn't, so he doesn't have my, my music. So that music guy was the same music guy that was there yesterday at my show, so oh. I, I think it's just, it just happens to just be him. Right. Okay, so we'll just throw the heat on him. Yeah, I'm throwing him under the bus. Uh, I, mean, who, like, I don't carry around a CD. I don't. Anymore. Nobody does. I have, I do a flash drive. Do you? I yes. got I, I should. I haven't had to do that. Or a in, thumbnail. This hasn't happened to me in so, like maybe a decade. Like this is a. Lo I don't think the last time I. Do you have what's your like, what's your entrance music? I a lot of times I'll come out to ACDC, shook me all night long, or I have my own. I have my own music that I'll use. Oh, you sing your own music. Right? Yeah. Well, I I might maybe I'll just do that tonight. Oh, you should. Instead of just using a random ACD. But song. I have a song that I think that before. that's my song that's pretty, I think, notorious for me. And it's yeah. so funny when they don't have my music because then, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm coming out to, like, and then I'm like, oh, give me the. See, you, I, I was there for the process where you decided your song and it was an ACD yeah. song. Yeah. ACDC yeah. song. It's a different one, though. Yes. But I'm just like, give me the. Ariana Grande or whatever the, <laughs> whatever the people like these days. Yes. Well, <laughs> I don't, you're probably like this too. Like, it takes me my entrance to drop in and like get into what I'm doing. Yes, so when, of you, when I come out to something that's not mine, it's going to throw me off tonight. Of course. Time. It's going to take me that extra minute or two to really drop into what's happening because well, I'm going to be thrown off. But I, it's, you, we know the deal. I look forward to seeing you off a beat. Yes. Well, right. yes. He did great. There's no need to worry about Coney Diener. He did wonderful. <laughs> and just like that, at the end of Cody Diener's match and my match, MCW was done, and I had one more show the following day, a Sunday, Alpha One Wrestling in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, the home of Iron Mike Sharp, and the scene of where I finally was able to have my friend Paul London on the show. A, a, one of the regrets of seven and a half years of sit-down talks with my friends, Paul and I never were able to sit down. We weren't on that many shows over the years. But luckily, Alpha One brought us together, and I could see how he was enjoying his time in Canada. When was the last time you were in Canada? It was probably over a year ago. NSPW, Quebec Montreal. City. Quebec City. They speak French, that's why they I think do. Montreal. That's where they filmed Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio. Great movie. Yeah, they filmed the, the culminating... 
catch him scene in downtown Quebec City. It's a ro- it's like the oldest colonized city on the continent. Do, now, do you do research, or someone tells you that while you're there, and now you, now it seems like you're smart because you're just telling me. Uh, yeah, it does sound like I'm smart. <laughs> no, it's all. It's all. Uh, How does one learn that information? Well, I don't speak French, so they, there, there was, yeah. I think I, they did tell me the the knowledge I retained what I could remember, which isn't much. What is there? So, like for me, from a guy from the suburbs of Chicago, yeah. I think about what was filmed when I was a kid. The Home Alone movies were there. Oh, that's rad. Weird Science was in my mall. Well, you you were in John Hughes' territory. Yeah, that's it's all your, John Hughes. Yeah, that's did you have anything for you as a kid? Like, well, are you in uh, Austin well, yeah, or I'm Dallas? From Texas. Um, the coolest thing for me is people still ask me if the Texas Chance of Massacre was real. They're like, "Where was the house?" And I have to explain to them who Ed Gein was, and that it was a guy in Wisconsin. And but the Texas, the house that the Texas Chance of Massacre, like the original, was in. They moved it, and it's now a bed and breakfast in some small town in Texas. Uh, and the, where it originally was is now a Marriott. Um, but the original cemetery at the beginning of Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a very real cemetery called Baghdad Cemetery in Leander, Texas. A friend of mine's mom is buried there. So, uh, yeah, useless film knowledge. I'm your guy. Perfect. <laughs> uh, and then wrestling-wise... Wrestling-wise... What's, wise, the, what's, what's, the, what's the wrestling routine for you these days? Well, I think, you know, as an old old man I uh, I try to relish the trips more than anything so I emphasize international travel but you know I don't know about you but as I get older it's bizarre because you think we've been flying around for 15 16 plus years my anxiety flying is worse than it's ever been so I just did this not to name job I did this WNYC uh, podcast and they said your 10 most things your 10 most fearful things And one of them was dying on a plane. Oh, wow. And I said, only recently has this become a thing, because I've flown, I'd say, over maybe two million miles. Ridiculous, ridiculous. And now I'm getting, I don't know if, and I know no one wants to hear about dreams, but I've been getting dreams on the plane while flying that the plane is going down. That's intense. Have you had any of that? No, that's that's too Final Destination for my (laughs) taste. I, uh, mine is more so dealing with crowds, with people. Um, I think it's the masses that really freak me out. I think it's because I avoid Black Friday at all costs, but yet when you travel, it it finds you. But just as an old man, I am uh, emphasis old. It, it's it, it just gets nerve wracking. You're like, okay, you know where your seat is. You know the you know how to count. You know the aisles. You know the alphabet. Just sit the fuck down. <laughs> I get it. I don't know. But we've been through the airport so many times so at this many. point. But you have to remember, not. someone asked me yesterday on the show, he was like, how was your flight? I was like, it's fine. He's like, but like, how was it getting on the flight? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, wait, I've, I've, I go, sir, I've flown over a million and a half miles. Like, the, like I can get on a flight and get to the airport easily. Uh, there was one time Brian and I, Kendrick, were, we were flying to Mexico and we went through LAX and he refuses all the microwaves and all the scanners on that stuff. She was like, no, you just pat me down. Go ahead. And this guy, I think he was being, you know, he was like, oh, you're going to want to pat down? Okay, fine. He was literally combing Brian's arm hair, <laughs> like his bare arm, and he was combing his hair and like looking at him as if he was going to, you know, transfer, you know, bioactive microbes to Mexico. Yeah, who the fuck knows? <laughs> but he was just giving him the worst Indian rug burn. And, and I just think if you fly through like Newark, some of these airports, I'm pretty convinced they hire directly out of the prison system. Mm. You know, it's like the rehab, the rehabilitate felons program. But like, let's just have them at the airport where we need with everybody. Yes. (laughs) Who better knows how to profile than villains? Let's have them profile criminals at the airport. I don't know. It's it's a fucking headache. This is the this this is the experience of two wrestlers who've been doing it too long. long. (laughs) Two traveled wrestlers. He didn't want to talk about wrestling too much. He'll talk about anything. Paul will talk about anything. And yes, we were in Canada. The both of us, all of us, the whole week I was in Canada. It was cold in Canada, and no joke, I tried out my new sponsor on the tour, and it it was perfect. Action Heat. They make the world's best battery-heated clothing. I got heat on demand at the touch of a button. 
They uh, they sent me the socks and the long sleeve shirts. That's what I wore. I had a tiny little battery pack that I charged up before I went on tour, and it lasted me the whole tour. And when I was cold, I just pushed the button on the pack, and my clothes started heating up. It was actually kind of fun to do. It was like a little video game on my body. I'll tell you what. I, I used to go to the Bears game when I was a kid, and I this is something I wish that I had when I would go to the Bears game. I just remember hating going to the game. I mean, I loved going to sports games, but I hated going to the Bears game because it was just so freaking cold. This would have been the perfect answer. I mean, these clothes are engineered to safely and efficiently deliver heat at temperatures up to 135 degrees. I had the socks and shirt, but they also have jackets, gloves, hats, long johns, and more. It's also priced pretty well. Some of the heated products are starting at just $39.99. Check out everything Action Heat has to offer and save 20% off your entire order at actionheat.com slash Colt. That's actionheat.com slash Colt. Or use the coupon code Colt at checkout to save 20% off. Be a good heel. Get some heat on your body. It's a tagline I just made up for him. Everyone was done in the first half. The second half was Kobe Durst and Josh Alexander wrestling a 60-minute Iron Man match. The show started at 4 o'clock, so some of the people started to leave, including Eddie Kingston. He was trying to leave. This is an overlying theme that's happening. Eddie Kingston had another nighttime flight that he was trying to make. Right now, we're not doing this again. I'm trying to leave. I'm trying to leave right now. Yeah, for real, why don't you do it with Stokely? Is it because a certain reason? Stokely Hathaway's here. Colt never interviewed Stokely Hathaway. I flight again at 8.50 and it's 6.05 right now. Why are you getting those late night flights? Because he's because it's cheaper, I guess. I don't I don't know. He's flying Spirit. No, no, Air Canada. Exclusive, exclusive, Eddie Kingston. Envy, envy, envy. Envy. Yo, you're not going to make this flight. It's an hour and a half away. Could you stop? Could you stop? But honestly, right? Could, could you stop? It's an hour and a half away? If it is, I'm, I'm crashing with you in your hotel room. Yep. And there it is. And you're going to buy then, another flight then, for tomorrow? Oh, no, the promoter is. promoter ain't going to buy you no fucking flight. We know who the promoter is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's going to be a rough sell. You're on your own. I know. It's going to be rough. But no, I'm going to make it. Stop Stop making me paranoid. Let's just do a sit-down interview right now. No, you're the worst. I want to talk about... You really are. Let's talk about how you started in wrestling. Yo, right, Stokely, get on this. Let's get talk about how you Stokely started in professional wrestling. No, let Stokely. doesn't like me. Coco Bear doesn't like me. I've, why, I've why asked him for years. I don't know. I don't know. Why don't you Probably like because him? I beat him yeah. last week. He, Damn. He, come on, Coco. Damn. Come on. Him. That's not on the record. I got to go. Peace. Boom, boom. boom Coco Bear podcast. I'm going to have, have to pay you. Uh, advertise. You got to get with midroll.com. You know there? They sell my advertising. What about Red Lobster? You don't do nothing with them? I mean, if they want to buy my advertising. Okay, what about Wingstop? Because I have a, uh, uh, an exclusive sponsorship with Wingstop. You do? Yeah, Lemon Pepper Dog. That's my, that's my brand. They have Lemon Pepper Dogs? No, I'm calling you Dog. Yo, I like how now he's in back, baby. I like how he's back. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. I'll be honest, I don't even know if Eddie Kingston made it back home. I, I'd imagine I, I would have gotten a phone call to say that, yeah, he would have stayed in my, in my hotel, right? He didn't. He must have made it out. And I, was, I didn't even have my own hotel room. It was me and Homicide. All these years later, we're sharing hotel rooms. Two beds, though. And uh, I'll give Homicide the uh, the last spot on the show, the main event, or the wind-down, if you will, as here's uh, Homicide and I hanging out in the locker room at Alpha One. Hmm? They let you in Canada? Well, I've been doing a good job with my family. I got married, got kids. I, I passed my GED. I'm not a probation. I used to be a convict. I'm good friends with the ambassadors of New York, so I'm Who's okay. The, who the uh, ambassadors, you know. I don't know. Rick ba- Rick Bassner? That guy, yes. Rick. Good old Rick. Some guy, some wrestlers that we know, we won't name names, have DUIs and aren't even allowed in Canada. Talk about the breast schools he is. Hey, you're talking about him, not me. No, no, I'm not talking about those breast schools. I'm talking about the other breast schools. Oh, school. Jerry, you're right. Yeah, Jerry and Jack, <laughs> you know, breast school. He's a shooter. He might kick my ass, but... So you can get over. So what? you just got this show today? Yeah, I did a show. I had a phenomenal... A little bit of tour. I uh, did PWA uh, for two days. I did up for one for the first time. Um, I, it was great, man. Uh, I loved it. You're changing over that Canadian money? How's that work for you? Well, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm from the streets. So th- me and this um, agent from the airport, we're going to have a bunch <laughs> of fun. So hopefully I go to like Tim Hurton or some restaurant and, you know, change some Canadian money for food. I'm old now, man. <laughs> How's your body holding up? My body, like, um, excuse my language, but I'm fucked up. I'm bad, <laughs> you know. Um, but I love pro wrestling. It's my passion. It's my, it saved my life. 
Um, I love to be a coach. Um, that's a hit hit for other major promotions out there. But um, other than that, I'm, I'm happy. My body is eh. It's not great, but I still could go. You're out there going. Yeah, um, they call me Old Man Logan. I don't know why. Hey, do you remember Old Man Daniels? He's, he's still old manning it out there. That guy's God, bro. Like, he is phenomenal. Sorry, AJ, but the one that's phenomenal is Chris. I was looking at old pictures of him. I was like, good Lord, he looks the exact same. He's a vampire. He's like the Lost Boys from 86. Come on. <laughs> like, I think he met Jesus, but he's awesome. He's great. Uh, how many years you got left? What, like, Do you think about this stuff? I, I talk a lot of crap like Terry Funk. Terry Funk is one of my heroes, and now I get it. I always say I'm done. I'm going to retire, and something keep pushing me back to the game. I got 24 years in my belt. I did everything except the dirt. WWE and New Japan uh, and all Japan um, I, I say that I'm done after the year's over but you after know after this year? That's like next two weeks yeah so basically this is my last international tour but like I say I talk a lot of crap I would say like yeah I'm done and I'm like Terry Funk that retired nine times and I come back for WrestleMania weekend <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll see you in April. <laughs> I'll see you in April. There's a lot of great money out there. <laughs> oh, man. It's like an overlying theme. Homicide saying he's old and he's going to retire. Paul London saying he's old many times. And then there's me. I mean, we're, we're all the same generation here. That 2004, 2006 Ring of Honor crew. Actually, Paul London was in WWE at that time. But you understand the, the 2002 Ring of Honor crew. Oh, no. Am I getting old? I hope not. I, I feel I got many, many years to go. That's the difference between myself and Terry Funk. I think Terry Funk retired at like 30 and then 25 times later. I'm still in it. And if you want to know where I'm going to be next or what you can purchase from me, you can stick around for these plugs ad. Upcoming events. All right, the best way that you can support ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash Colt Cabana. My storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of this show, old and new, are ad-free on StitcherPremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt. Get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe you're a promoter. Want to put me on your upcoming show or convention. I also have a YouTube channel. I also have a website, ColtCabana.com. That's where you can find my P.O. Box. Send me something fun upcoming just letting you know i do have some dates that are open january 17th and 18th that weekend is open right now feel free tell your local promoter december 14th and 15th new york city rohwrestling.com i will be doing some announcing sunday december 16th san juan puerto rico facebook slash cwapr thursday december 27th annandale virginia facebook slash northern virginia pro wrestling friday december 28th cleveland ohio aiwrestling.com saturday december 29th marionette park illinois aiwrestling.com Friday, January 4th, San Antonio, Texas, Facebook slash RCW Forever. Saturday and Sunday, January 5th and 6th, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Facebook slash First Wrestling. January 12th, 13th, 24th, 25th, 26th, Atlanta, North Carolina, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, doing commentary for ROHWrestling.com. And Friday, February 1st, Atlanta, Georgia, Inspire Pro Wrestling. Dot com. Intro music by the ukulele teacher on YouTube. Outro music by Super Fun Yeah Yeah Rocket Ship. Podcast cover art and design by Jimmy Lee. Photo by James Musclewhite. Thanks to Shane from SKM. The Honky Talk Man, Scotty O'Shea, Cody Diener, Paul London, Eddie Kingston, Stokely Hathaway snuck on, and Paul London for being on the show. Thanks to our sponsors, HighSpots.com, a VOD service with all those PWGs, a lot of fun interviews, a lot of sit-down interviews, the Best Friends Show with me and Marty. Plus, they have AMA knee pads, gear, wrestling masks and ring onehourtees.com they help run pro wrestling tees.com that's where you can support your favorite independent wrestler directly all right next week a little spoiler I, I am off my brother is getting married i'm going to portland if i don't have to travel enough i'm going to portland so next week will be the live all in show which was amazing I, uh, I'm probably going to edit out one of those people that was on the show, though. So uh, you'll see next week. It'll be a real fun one. But until then, this has been The Art of Wrestling. For Cole Cabana, I'm Cole Cabana. Thanks. Hi, I'm John Pollock. And I'm Wei Ting. And last year, we were fired. Wished well in our future endeavors. So I said, hey, Wei. Yes, John? It's time to launch our own television station. That's f***ing.
fucking crazy. I mean our own website. That's better. And so we launched postwrestling.com and became our own bosses. Every week, John and I spend way too many hours reviewing wrestling with shows dedicated to Raw and SmackDown immediately after they air, plus coverage of every pay-per-view and more. Best of all, we are completely listener-supported through our Patreon, the Post Wrestling Cafe, with bonus shows guaranteed each week, including our live video show, The Cafe Hangout. Come by postwrestling.com for daily news updates, analysis, podcasts, and the biggest names dropping by. Sorry to put you on the spot. Did you get a chance to listen to my podcast that I put out today? Yes, I did. Postwrestling.com. We review wrestling. Say that one with like a bit more emphasis. Yeah, sorry. I was just, uh, I was in bed earlier today, so.